Okay, so I'm just going to give you a little uh, introduction to this synth, all right? It's uh, an 8 operator FM synthesizer. I wrote it a while back when I was teaching sound design at uh, a uni, and uh have been sitting on my computer for a few years, and I thought I'd make it accessible and usable, and make it fully polyphonic, which was a bit harder than I thought it was going to be. Uh, you need to download Super Collider and install it to get it to work. Uh, so if you go into Google, type in Super Collider, download, find it, install it, and that's the program. It's pretty pretty straightforward. You don't have to, you don't need to know how this code works. You just need to run it. So the download link at the bottom of the video. If you download the code, and this is the code, you don't need to read it. There's just one bit I'm going to point out whilst it's open, where it says Polyphon. There, uh, that's the polyphony limit of the synth. You can change that if you want to make it bigger. As much as your computer will handle, it will handle a lot more than twelve. I would have thought. Uh, so all you need to do to run it, just double click there, press shift and return or enter and this will come up, it's the synth and this is um 8 operator FM synthesizer and these are all the envelopes for each of the operators and I'll just point you through a few things, so all these things here, this is the level for each oscillator so each oscillator, no matter what's going on with it, you can change the level of it which you'll see how useful that is later so present if I just turn this one up, press a key, there you go, a note, wonderful Turn this one up, that's the first harmonic, second harmonic, third harmonic, etc. You get the idea, and that's that's um, done by this F ratio, frequency ratio down the right. So first oscillator, fundamental frequency, two times the fundamental, three times, four times, five, six, seven, eight, etc. And all these boxes here, that's the FM architecture. So if I want this oscillator here to modulate this oscillator here, all I have to do is turn this up. Uh, normally when you get to about 50 it starts making an effect there we go bit of a bit of reverse fm bass famous from the old dead dread if i hit the open button here i can actually edit the envelope a little bit so i can make that and each off each operator's got its own envelope and curves on each stage of the envelope and it surprises me you don't get such obvious curves on most synthesizers are getting made now because it's such a useful feature to be able to change the curve it's just to change how the shapes the sound the sound shape so that's just a simple one oscillator thing now it's very flexible this synth because you can essentially you can route any oscillator to, to modulate any oscillator set up feedback loop so if i now want this one to modulate this one I'll just turn this up and now we've got the architecture this modulating this which is modulating this and it's coming out there as you can hear, we're getting a bit more, a bit more of an interesting tone, and I can change the shape of this oscillate, this envelope as well. So I could say I actually want this to come in straight away. We're getting an interesting shape at the front of the note, and if I then want to bring this up, I'll actually start to hear this oscillator. Similarly for this one, so I can actually not only use all the oscillators to modulate each other, I can then make a mix between all the oscillators. And then if I were to get this guy here and say um, modulate this one, I can set a bit of a feedback loop at the bottom. So if you feedback oscillators on each other, you get white noise. And this will probably start sounding a little bit cranky, as you would expect. Sometimes it's useful just to have a really subtle amount of feedback going on at the head of a head of a architecture, give it a bit of instability, but not too much. So I'm not going to give a huge lecture on what can be done with FM here because the, the possibilities are endless. I'm just going to show you what the features are. So in each of these envelopes, I'll just open up an envelope. We'll see what we've got in there. As you see, these are the times. You just pick up and move the times as you see fit. And these are the curves of each of the phases. Uh, this is actually the sustain time here. So um, that, that level just remains a constant and that's the release time there. And each oscillator's got an LFO on it. So there's the rate how much it modulates the pitch and how much it modulates the amplitude and how long it takes to fade in and also you've got envelope pitch modulation as well so i'll just turn the rate up i'll double click on it type a number in press return and turn the amp modulation up to i don't know 2.6 obviously that sounds a bit crap so i'll turn it down a bit slow it down a bit it's very useful the things you can do with this you just got to tune it right you're beginning to see the if I fade it in, it's not the best patch I've ever made. You can hear the tremolo begin to come in over time. So that's a very useful programming feature in it. Um, 
and each of the envelopes has got its time here so how long it takes i have to fix this actually it says zero at present it's actually one so if i just put this up to if i just click on it and i'll just type the number press return then tab just to go to the next one just a quick way of adding them all in remember to press return tab return tab just as a quick way of adding all the featured numbers in and now the envelopes last a lot longer fade out a lot longer so that's the the global envelope time there and f ratio is the frequency ratio now at present they're all harmonic so you're going to get harmonic sounds but you can just go into here if i was to make this 2.4 for example make this 3.7 and make this 0.7 for example we'll get start thinking, listening to what each of the other oscillators sound like. Start getting some creepy noises. And there's all these things down here I'm going to explain to you now. This this thing says arc rand. Essentially, this allows you to randomize the, the FM architecture. So if I turn this one up, this is the probability it's going to choose a cell to put an FM amount in. And that's the probable value it will put in. So if it's down there, it'll just put lots of you see it's just made a completely random FM structure. If I turn this one up, the values will be higher. You'll get a much richer sound, probably tending towards noise now, actually. But if you turn this down, there's going to be less cells with it in. Okay, so that's the... It's a similar thing for envelopes as well. I'm not going to do the envelopes. Probably the least useful of all of them is the envelope random. Frequency random. Now that's interesting because we can randomize the frequencies of each of the operators. This is the amount it will randomize it by. And that's the one on the left is the probability it will randomize it. And this is a value it will round it to. So at present it's going to make inharmonic things. If I keep pressing it. You can see all the frequencies on the right changing. A, a useful one because get a lot of different things just by randomizing this the sort of things it will come out with it's kind of infinite really it's such a such a, a deep form of synthesis and then you've got um level rand which is also very useful this will randomize the the mix of the oscillators which you'd be amazed the difference this makes coming out there so and i've got this thing here it just says everything random it will just perform all the functions at once including the envelope one which i didn't want it to do but anyway god only knows what's going to come out when you do it and then change the levels in it and naturally if you want to save it there's a button there if you come across a patch you like, which you ought to, uh, press save. Useful that really, isn't it? Being able to save things. Hit save, save it somewhere. And then if you want to load it, press the load button. It's not rocket science. So that's it in its current state. Now, um, if you want to sequence this, you might have difficulty. At present, I'm just using a MIDI keyboard. If you don't have a MIDI keyboard, you have to press that to test it. It's a bit of a ball lake, really. You have to put in your frequency there. Yeah, you're better off with the MIDI keyboard plugged in. It should just work. Um, the next plan for this is to actually make it so that when you hit one of these random things, it will actually morph between the functions over time. But that's a bit of a programming conundrum. I've yet to get my head round. But when it happens, the idea is then you'd be able to sequence this from like an arpeggio and then trigger the different randomnesses and all the randomness and random kind of variables will morph in and out of each other. And uh, will I give that one away? Yeah, of course I will. Anyway, enough of that. Uh, download links at the bottom of the page and enjoy it.